So I am uh, Ambo Squawk, I'm the VP of Technology in Indigo and Head of Innovation for Digital. I have, this title helped me, um, or this position helps me to have a unique opportunity and um, challenge to think about our future of the store. Um, today I would like to share with you the journey, the discovery journey that I have gone through. But before I go on, this is just a, uh, Indigo is a publicly traded company, so just a public uh, disclaimer. Indigo is, uh, how many of you guys know Indigo? Have you heard of the name? Okay, that's good, 50% of them. Great, awesome. So we are the largest. You guys are from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Indigo is the largest book retailer in Canada. Coast to coast, we have over 200 stores. We do not only sell books, we actually sell a lot of kids' products, a lot of gifting. Um, if you think about online search, it's Google. Gifting is indigo in Canada for sure. Uh, it may not be in the US, but we'll get to that. Well, you can think of us as the world's first cultural department store. That's how we want to think of, think of it. Being a book retailer, we have some unique challenges. And when it comes to challenge, there's always opportunity that goes with it, is 100,000 skills. Some of our store has easily over 100,000 skills. For me as a, cust a store associate or for, uh, for me as a customer, how do I find the product, right? How do I uh, able to find the complementary product that goes with this? That's the opportunity is as a store associate, I'm able to provide that information. Say, hey, if you're looking for this product, these are the products that goes really well with that product because we do have 100,000 skills. I'm sure you guys heard about customer journey, design thinking, um, journey mapping. Customer journey has been studied. You guys heard of it many, many years. So I'm not gonna go through this. But not many retailers actually think the other side of the coin is what is the journey for store associate? Wait, they are as important as customer. What, how, what do they go through? What is their day to day? What challenge do they face? So my part of my job is to figure out what is the next future store is. If, if that's the case, how do I find out? Do I do another journey mapping with a store associate? There are so many store associates, they are all different. I think the best way for me to do it is I, uh, I have my own version of undercover boss. So I become a store associate. I actually work in a store for one week to experience what do they do and what kind of tools as a technologist, how can I offer the tool for them to do their job? This is what I find now, 100,000 skills. It's not about picking the stock out of the shelf. It's about putting the stock in the right place. It's not easy. Every night we have 15 skills of product coming in. How do you put it all in the right place? We have a tool for that. Regular retailers touch their products at least four times a year for cycle counting, for inventory management. When you have 100,000 skills in the store, that is a big problem. As, those, as a store associate, I have to, one of my shifts is to count a section. I need to have a tool that helps me organize to, to count the right thing at the right sequence. 13% of our online purchase goes to, is shipped to store. In my shift, Easily, a dozen customers will come in and say, hey, Ambos, I have an online order. Can I pick it up? So I have to know where to pick, find the product in the back shelf and give it to them. Or they will say, hey, I have an online order. Where is it now? I need to have tools to provide that information. Book retailer is slightly different with uh, other retailers is book sales is a little like consignment. Some of the books that we do not sell, we, we can return to the publisher. Well, uh, again, I take on a light shift to pull stock out of the shelf and send it to the publisher. Well, which one do we pull? How many do we pull? If you have a section that is sparse in quantity already or you don't have a lot of selection, do you still pull from it? Because then you are reducing the selection for the customers. So all these require tools for us to do it. We have, I believe, we have one of the highest swipe rate for our loyalty program. 70% of our customers coming in have loyalty with us. We have a lot of information. So customer will come, show me the card, say, hey, do I have enough points to redeem to make this purchase? Uh, again, I need to have tools to show them. 
I share with you guys that we are a gifting destination. There's a point that there's a uh, mom holding a gigantic stuffed animal from the kids section. And there's a little um, eight-year-old daughter of hers give me a stack of gift cards, say, hey, uh, gentlemen, can you check all the bonds to make sure that I, I can buy this gigantic stuffed animal with gift card? Again, I have to have tools for that. But it was fun, it's fulfilling. This is the most exciting part that we have launched recently, uh, just before the holiday, is uh, we launched our mobile POS pilot to not all 200 stores, but some of the flagship stores we have, some of the moving stores we have, really exciting. As a store, store associate, I would love to be able to find the product for the customer, recommend products, and actually cash them out on the aisle. That builds a lot of trust and relationship with the customer. And the customer love it. They see, they see that I'm work, working with them on the transaction. I show them all the discounts they have. It's really engaging. In, in here, we talk about ROI. This is a perfect example of ROI. The sign on the left is the sign that we put on in one of our store, which is in the far most busiest mall in Toronto. Probably the most busiest mall in Canada, I would say, is in the Eaton Center. The, the sign that I'm sure you guys can see it is the fastest line in the mall, not the shortest. We are actually one of the longest line in the mall, but it's the fastest. Longest line is a good problem to have, but it's also fastest because we use mobile POS to line bus and get people out very quickly, expedite their checkout process. Customer love this. Um, based on this, we have, based on our pilot stores, we can see some really, really good sales that right now we are compiling from our finance department, but we have seen really, really good output coming from it. We'd love to share that number when we uh, release those. So after this one week of undercover boss, what did I find out about future? Finding needles in the haystack is very difficult. And I have to actually put the needles in the white haystack in the first place. We can do better, right? Uh, I think Google search has trained us to be a lot more um, relying on the instant gratification. We want things fast. Study shows that five minutes is all the att attention span that we have. If we cannot find that product, five minutes they will walk out. Right? And I think the attention span is less than us when we are becoming a, a three months old Labrador retriever because we cannot focus. Not only that we need to find the product, sometimes we may not be able to find the product. Maybe we can offer complementary products that works well or uh, similar products. We have to know the customer first. How do we do that? Customer trusts us to provide their transaction data, their online purchases, their loyalty information for us so we can use it. Are we using it correctly? Are we using it to the best we can? In 10,000, 100,000 SKUs, how do we provide the hyper-personalization that the customer is expecting right now? Right? We, our attention span is low and we have a lot of information that coming into our head every day. We cannot see everything. We have customers relying on us as store associates to provide that information. Also, where is my online order? We need to provide that information. It is no longer acceptable to answer customers say, oh, this is your online order. I don't have the system to look up for that. From customer perspective, they don't really care whether it's online, whether they buy from Instagram or Facebook. They see you as a brand. You should have a single plane, say this is our brand, this is how we access information, don't worry about it. If you transact with us, we know your transaction. We know where your stock is, we know when the delivery is. Don't worry about it, we, we, we should provide that. If not, people will walk away from your store because they do not see value. People see that if customers that, sh that actually shop more than one channel, if they go to in-store, online, Facebook, Instagram, if they shop in multiple channels, they actually have a 30% higher lifetime value. And the basket, basket size is larger too. So leverage that. But leverage it in the right way. Make sure you have the right tool for your store associate to provide that information. 
So store is a fund for your online as well. They are not separate. Voice commerce. This is a personal experience. I have a kid, but I am not very good at kids' books. There's a, a, a mom come to me and say, hey, my kid is five years old. He really likes dinosaurs. Can you recommend a book? I was like, uh, I can say, I'm a seasonal worker, so I actually don't know. That is not a good answer, okay? Uh, so I type into my team and say, hey, team in the store, can you recommend, help me to solve this problem? And of course, my, some of my uh, team members in the store will, was able to help me. I'm so grateful because I look like an idiot. But imagine if I can go, call back to the home office that some merchandiser knows books really well. Or I can call someone in Vancouver, I know that guy, that he really knows books really well, kids books really well. Can I tap into that resources? Right. In the Go store associates really passionate about their job and they know their product really well. Not like me being a seasonal worker. So that, that was a, a moment say, oh, can I provide a technology to help them? Well, why do we need this? Because the customer is trained to use it. You guys have Apple, Siri, Google Home, and Amazon Dot. You can order your toilet paper through voice. We should, from store associate, we should be able to find help through voice as well. So that's my journey. I, it's really exciting that I actually work for a week, but this is what I find. When customers come to a store, they're expecting something. They're expecting some value out of it. They drive all the way to your store. They can find a lot of information from online. Well, are, you, are we providing that value? Are we equipping the store associate to provide that value? Are we providing value that they drive all the way to find out? Could it, be, it could be product information. It could be recommendation from you. It could be information that they de didn't even know that they need. Uh, part of gifting strategies we want to uh, surprise and delight our customer is to understand what they need and provide all the assortment that they can find out without going through internet. Of course, they can find out a lot of things on internet, but it's a store associate that knows a product that can recommend that. Information asymmetry. Customers are smarter every day. Like you said, they probably come in, they know the product they want. They find out a lot of information online. They know the products they want, but as a store associate, I have 100,000 products that I need to know information for. How can I do that? It's impossible. We need to step up the game to provide that information to the store associate. Otherwise, there's no reason for the customer to come into the store. We are creating the retail apocalypse ourselves. Um, we cannot let the customer go unsatisfied. Happy wife, happy life. I'm sure everyone <laughs> heard about that. I believe in happy customer, I mean happy store associate will create more happy customers. If I can do my job confidently and adequate for sure, but have to be confident providing that information and value to the customer, they will come and work, stop our, in our store a lot more often. We need to drive them back to the store and hopefully we will create a long-term relationship so we can turn the customer from a one-time transaction, hopefully winning not only their wallet, but also their mind, as well as their heart, turn them into a brand advocate. I think that is much better way than marketing, but that is my personal experience. I'm sure a lot of marketers will disagree with that. At the end, that's my picture. Uh, actually checking our customer. So, Thank you for the opportunity. I can share the story with you. Hopefully I can share the future story with you relatively soon. Um, so uh, my name is Scott Adele. I'm the Vice President of Retail Excellence. It is a pretty cool title. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, so uh, I'm responsible uh, for in our organization, 
really to work with the operational arms of the retailers and really understand that customer journey better. Uh, with that, I also uh, run the training team and help our overall associates within our, our organization and with our customers' organizations adopt uh, a solution that allows uh, to put the mobility devices in their hand and solve real world problems. So, you know, the moniker up on the screen says we're a mobile platform built exclusively for store associates. It really should say a little bit more. We're built for store associates, but by store associates. We solve the real world problems that, as Ambles, you know, so elegantly mentioned, that exist in stores today to create less friction between the customer and that associate. So kind of what do we do? What does this platform look like? So we're, we're a productized platform in the cloud. Uh, we basically take all of your legacy data, all those, you know, old archaic systems where you have all this rich information but can't pull it out in a way that's easily digestible for your associate to actually utilize. We take that, we deduplicate it, we make it a little more efficient, and we put it down into an iOS-first device, which allows us to actually brand it and create a skin uh, to solve real problems. One of the ways we do that, the reason why our tool is so easily adopted, we're an official mobility partner of Apple. What that means is that all of our design standards as we build product, we work directly with Apple in order to make sure that we fit their design standards for their iOS and for their infrastructure. So as you grab one of our devices, majority of your associates are already comfortable using their own phones. They grab ours and allow the, uh, allow the adoption curve or the training curve to be significantly smaller because they're already used to the navigation. Outside of this, every one of our partners that we sign on and utilize our device also gets a, an Apple account executive to actually help with that journey and ensure that it fits kind of what they're sort of building within their retail experience in their stores. Overall, it creates a really nice uh, seamless experience for your uh, associate and allows them to, to want to engage with your device and actually want to stay with your organization. So what we've heard, we've seen a lot of metrics in and around, you know, today with uh, Fit for Commerce and Indigo both showing what they've understood with the customer. From the vendor side, here's what we've seen. There's really this digital divide. Why we exist is because the sales associate and uh, the retailer, sorry, excuse me, sales associate and the customer, as they get together, we find about 84% of the customers that come in the store, they believe that they know more than that sales associate. Our original customer, which was Toys R Us, where this was uh, uh, born from, or the first instance that we put in place, was to solve the problem of a pregnant mother coming into a store and dealing with a 17-year-old associate that has, knows nothing about babies. So what we did was we created this application that gave them so much knowledge in and around the product, they could actually solve real problems. So now you're taking somebody that doesn't have that real world experience and putting them on that same playing field. What that does is opens up a conversation and allows them to actually engage with that customer in a way that's meaningful, as opposed to putting them out in the, the open cloud to go find competition that can solve that problem. So the business problems that we see uh, and, and how we kind of build in and around the innovation and what we like to sell, uh, is we really solve these technical business and financial problems. It's no, no uh, secret that really IT costs are kind of soaring. Old legacy systems are getting harder to maintain and manage, right? Um, business uh, adoption over all of these particular products, specifically in clientele, you have associates that are going rogue, grabbing their own devices because they're commissioned, and they're trying to do everything they can to make the most out of their box. When you don't solve these problems or you don't focus on these particular issues, it creates animosity between not only your management and your staff, but also between those customers and the associates. That's that digital divide again. So how do we help? The store associate really, we believe, is the retailer's most important asset. As we continue to build product, we build product, like I said, from the sales associate up. We come up with a solution. We pull in 200 associates. We focus group them. We ensure that we're on track. We then take that and develop solution. We bring in 200 customers. We run through those customers to ensure that it solves their problem. Then we bring it to some of the best tier one executives in the retail marketplace to validate our solution before we go to market. The whole, whole thing to that is not we're really cool because we deal with a lot of people. It's that we, we solve the real problem. We start at that associate, and the reason why we're sticky, the reason why we can get in, into stores, the reason why people like to use our product, it's easy to use, it solves real problems, it makes them money. 
We take regular organizations that we see from a basic maturity model that maybe have one or two devices in the store and we move them quickly across a maturity channel to take those legacy systems and make them not only an omni-channel retailer, but a relationship-centric retailer. Really built to take the, the, the application, show it either to the customer or work with it behind the seams to create an experience that not only is seamless for both of them to interact, but also empower them with more knowledge about that customer to create something hyper-personalized to be able to solve that person's needs, not the generic needs of everybody. So what happens when we put it in? About 43% of people uh, that we've surveyed or associates we've surveyed have saved a lost sale. 61% have saved the customer time. In the future, as we continue to spend money on acquisition and you're finding new customers and old customers or repeat customers, your repeat customers, new currency is going to be time in the future. If you're not focused on moving your most loyal customers through your experience, giving them somewhere really cool, but solving other needs like pick up and store, moving the product to where you are, you will be behind. We solve those problems and we produce real results. So let me show you a little bit more detail, tell you about the four main platforms that we have that are bread and butter and maybe talk about three if I have time of ones that we're launching at the show. One is assisted selling. This is the basic need of assisted selling is ingesting your catalog, showing it in a way that's fairly similar to an e-commerce experience, but not only from the experience perspective of navigation, we're also empowering those associates with all of the uh, knowledge of the product through description, through reviews, and connecting them with any buyer notes that, that your associates would need in order to have the most information that they require. Check out, uh, Amble's elegantly uh, you know, talked about how we create mobile POS solutions. We're not just a mobile POS for your in-store experience, we're also a connected commerce experience. So we can move that transaction across your, your infrastructure, online, in-store, mobile web, uh, we can do Apple Pay, there's really nothing we can't do within POS. Ideally, we integrate with your current provider today. So we're not gonna come in and say, throw out all your NCR 7052s, don't use you know, Addion. What we're saying is we're actually gonna uh, come in, work on top of that, and showcase an, uh, an experience for your associate that is simple, seamless, and works with everything. Sure. So we also do clienteling, uh, which is uh, really that outreach perspective for your customer, knowing all about them, solving their needs, recommended products and, and outreach. And the store communications, which is really cool, that allows you to uh, send down announcements, follow-ups to your staff, and ensure a measure back at head office, have they actually achieved those results, did they do them? So it sounds great, a couple examples. Bonobos, uh, Bonobos, we went in, they had MacBooks on their counters. We removed the MacBooks in the stores. We put mobile devices in their, their store itself. Uh, this is an A-B test over a period of time. We saw a 12% increase in AOV in about six weeks, 4.7% increase in UPT. They continue to be a, a, a strong customer of ours and love our device and innovate.